a hockey podcast network. Hockey is more than a game, it's a lifestyle. It's you, the diehard supportive fans, your favorite players who are on the team you cheer for and the organization who supports them. The companies that make your gear, bags, and beer leak sweaters, the hockey moms and hockey dads, and everything else that makes this house of hockey your home. Come on in, I'm Breezy. And I'm Ray Ray. And, and this, this is, is our, our house. house. Welcome to the House of Hockey podcast, episode 134. I'm one of your hosts, Breezy. And I'm your other host, Ray Ray. And this week we are talking about a few things, like every week. I don't know why I started off saying that. That was kind of weird. <laughs> We've got a whole list of rundown of content to get to. We've got our brand new segment that we are Mm -hmm. debuting hunk of the week because breezy is back baby. And so is hunks of hockey, um, her Instagram, the Instagram account. And we breezy came up with this brilliant idea to do a hunk of the week. And so we reached out to you all on social and I'm going to read your responses and we'll chime in with ours. And then we've got some other things to talk about. Plus we have a guest. We do. I don't know why I did that. You tell everybody about the guest. (laughs) Yeah. Jeff McLean of the co-founder of pride tape. Uh, He's going to talk about what's new with pride tape and what's going on. Uh, for upcoming events that they have coming um or maybe he didn't talk about that maybe that was private that's okay i don't know stay tuned yeah stay tuned sneak peek uh and a book that was released uh that was related to them called who's hockey great book i loved it um illustrations are incredible Mm -hmm. do you want to open it up miss uh kindergarten teacher yes there you go yes it's a children's (laughs) book and it is in um they teamed up with the NHL and hockey is for mm-hmm. everyone. And it's a book about acceptance. And the tagline is search for teammates and you'll find friends. And Jeff uh, tells us all about how the book came about, how it's helping people, how you can get involved in supporting acceptance and really living out what it means when uh, the league says hockey is for everyone. And then it's not always easy um, for people who don't feel accepted and mm. it's a great conversation. So he's, he's coming up in a little bit, but we've got a lot to discuss. Yeah. So we might as well get to it. Okay. What are we starting with? I think we should start with the all-star stuff because okay. we missed some of that, um, during our taping. So, and it's still ongoing this week. People are still, uh, fans can vote in their extra all-stars. So I've got a little bit of a bone to pick about two players who were voted in as all-stars. And I'm sure that will come to no surprise, uh, come as no surprise to some of you, especially of like the one person. Um, but NHL hockey operations department decides the initial list of all-stars. Obviously they pick one from every team, if not more, uh, in the respective divisions. I have some hard no's and for legit reasons that I would like to discuss, but do you have anything else nice to say about the all-star roster thus far? Um, no, not really. For me, I think it's always very predictable who's going to be there, right? And I feel like yeah, it needs to be, um, I mean, I, I guess I understand why the All-Stars is the All-Stars, but I, sometimes I want fresh faces in there. And sometimes maybe someone needs to take a step back and let, you know, maybe someone who has a little bit more assist uh, than to their goals and uh, not calling anybody out in specific. However... <laughs> I think, I think we need a fresh uh, slew of faces there. Yes. And the fans get to vote in who they want to be there. So we do have some say. So um, I was about to go in and vote because I was so irritated at the choice that was selected for my team, the Chicago Blackhawks, that I was like, that's it. I'm voting and I have to create an account and I was running out of time. So I will go back and vote, but let me pick my bone here okay okay i don't even remember who was even voted in for the it's okay 
So I'll just, uh, I don't want to read through everybody, but you can go look it up online, but I'm going to just stick with the central division. The, the person who was chosen from the Chicago Blackhawks was Seth Jones. Okay. Let's unpack this for a second. So he's been out with an injury for like most of the season. He's only got 16 total points when there are, is another player on our team, Max Domi, who has 30 points. He's above Patrick Kane and above Jonathan Taze. Why the hell wasn't he chosen? I know they have to pick a certain number of defensemen and forwards and only one goaltender and blah, blah, blah. But like, that is such a baffling choice to me of like, if you're going off of like, what are you ranking as an all-star? Why are we... How on earth does he qualify just on like points and statistics alone as an all-star? So that was like a little frustrating. And I think the other head scratcher for me, and this is like a tough subject because of this player's um, loss in his family, but Kevin Hayes was the one chosen off of the flyers. And he, there's like, um, better player, Travis, is it Konecki? Is that how you say mm -hmm. his name? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Yeah. He's got 46 flipping points, 24 goals, 22 assists. I mean, Hazy's killing it on the assists. He's got 10, um, game 10 goals, excuse me, and 27 assists with 37 points. So like, that's still like super exciting and he's having a great season and like, all of that is great, but I'm just kind of like, but really? Like, okay. I mean, I'm sure it means a lot to him and I, I'm not trying to take away from any of the like hardships off the ice he's dealt with, which is like serious. And we've talked about that, but like just on stats alone, I was kind of confused. I mean, no, nope. no I'm, comment. You're, you're going to just you're let me. Wrong. You're just going to let me. Wrong hang out there with my frustration in players yeah, just, just hang out just hang out over there no no you're not wrong um I would like to know what like the criterias are because things are questionable for sure but hey I mean it is what it is yeah there's a few head scratchers in there but like but go vote Maybe that's just a reason to make people go vote and interact. Right. Maybe it's, it's a good marketing play. I, I I don't know either. Questionable. Yeah. I mean, like Patrick Kane is still alive and well and like still a member of the Blackhawks the last time I checked. <laughs> and like, but I Domi don't know. Domi would be a, a good choice for the Hawks to put on there. If Domi you want a fresh face. Yes. Uh, I mean, even Taylor Radish is having an incredible season, you know, but like it, I mean- Listen, it's hard when your team sucks all in all and, you know, you've got to pick the best of a bad yeah. situation. But like the Seth Jones, I just, uh, I don't know. I'm not here for it. I And that's all I have to say about that. That's all you got to say. I mean, even like the Kings, like uh, Fiala is a fair. Yeah. Obviously, like he's doing good. Can't complain about that. But yeah. for a new face, like, why don't you put, like, Gabe Velarde up there who started off the season being absolutely incredible or, like, a Trevor Moore? Uh, yeah, Trevor Moore, that, right. That would be cool. I mean, Trevor Moore's injured right now, but fresh face. Eh, at least it's not, like, a Dowdy or Kopitar because I feel like those, A, I don't think that they have done enough this season to make it to the All-Star. However, they've already been there true but that doesn't mean you shouldn't go again it's I true. mean I hear your point it's like I mean Kevin Fiala for sure deserves he's got 47 points 16 yeah, goals and good. 31 yeah. assists Jesus Christ but Kopi Dano and Arvidsson all have like mid 30s with their points right now so you could argue that more? any of hmm what's more at Trevor Moore Oh, he's way down. He's only got 19 total. Yeah, but just his, I don't know. I think I'm just a more fan at this point. So. I mean, there's Sean Dersey like, would be cool, even though, I mean, he's playing really well. Makes some mistakes, but. Why not uh, Dano? Yeah. 
Philip Deneau. I mean, there's no reason. Yeah, he can go. Right. I, I mean, think I voted for him, actually. <laughs> so you've already done the fan vote then. Yeah, but I'm going to do it again because you can do it like every day. Yeah, I don't know if I can commit to that. Um, yeah. I know I should if I really want to make my vote matter. But, but you can I do will... 10 votes a day every day, I think. That's a lot of voting. But you can like redo your vote. Like you can do it like 10 times. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. So feel real confident if you're going to do the 10 vote. Okay. I will. Yeah. Okay. I will. I'm I'm going to okay. do my best to show my support and put my put my my a, my action behind my words. There you go. How about Kevin Fiala? At the, what is this note you have about Kevin Fiala and Roman Yossi? Okay, so I've noticed uh, more recently that Fiala and Yossi have like the same eyes. They look the same. And oh, it's probably because they're shape? both from, yeah, they have like the same like look. Like right here, they look the same. And I think it's because they're both from Switzerland. <laughs> I think that's like the Swiss look. So is he a new hunk of yours, Kevin Fiala? Oh, absolutely. Oh, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I see what you see. I see what you see. Right. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. I don't really know if that was like worth like mentioning on here, but it was just a note that I wanted to share with you. But hey, we said it, so it's fine. Well, here we are. Let's talk about the return of hunks of hockey. The what? You cut out. The Sorry. Re- Let's talk about like how do you not know what he said? Let's talk about the return of hunks of hockey. Oh, yeah, I know what you mean there. <laughs> That's me. I That's did it. you. I text you. I text Ray, and I was like, "I think I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna start this up again." And she goes, "Yes, you have to." And I was like, "You know what? Let's just, let's just freaking do it." Um, and I did it. Yeah, and it's it had a good response. Pretty good response. Oh, yeah. I've yeah. been missing it. I'm not going to lie. I've been missing it. I have a lot of people who who submitted requests. I think there was like 49 requests that came in different players. Oh my God. <laughs> so um, be patient. I will post. I just need to find photos and I just, I just got to do it. You have 49 days worth of content coming. So I'm sorry if you don't see your guy right away. Uh, <laughs> it's coming. And there will be a Sagan Sunday. I don't know if I'll do it every Sunday, though, because that's kind of a lot, but we'll see. It's kind of nice, though. I mean, it's in tradition, so. Yeah, it's true. So maybe I will stick to it. Every time I see a hunky player, I just shoot you uh, the, their picture in the DM. So, you know, you do. I just it as helps. I'm as I'm reading social and like scrolling, I just shoot you. I look yeah. for a, a hunky player. So I sent Breezy a bunch, but. She had this great idea to do a segment every week on the show, nominating our hunk of the week. And it could be, Mm -hmm. I don't really think there's any real qualifiers. I think it should just Mm -hmm. be like, it could be for any ridiculous reason, because it's sort of a ridiculous thing anyway. Yeah. Like in a good way, in a good way. Um, Mm -hmm. And so I put up a little poll on social, so I'm going to fire these off. And if any of them sound worthy to you of being uh, in contention, in contention, in a can whatever you know what i mean let me know yeah lj caps 70 nominates garnet hathaway laura K- canyer uh chris Kreider. Mm-hmm. yael says miko ratanin rantanin what's wrong with me miko rantanin for always giving 110 percent no matter what well she the Wag- one that wanted me to do miko mondays uh probably she's probably. blonde yeah, I think so. Yeah, I think that's a great idea. Uh, Jake Wagner said McDavid for his socks. Ooh, if you all didn't it. see this week, he it has been revealed that McDavid wears the same pair of socks every game day since juniors or something. That's funny. I like Just it. Just like Crosby still wears his jock from uh, juniors. Like the old, it's, it's like disgusting, yeah. gross. Um <sighs> I mean, I'm, I am, I am liking Jake Wagner's choice of McDavid for the sole purpose because of his gross socks, but that doesn't yeah. really qualify as like hunk. So 
I don't know. My, um, Brent for rent says Mike Ricci, the flow missing teeth goon and Dustin D 15 nominated uh, Milan Lucic. Lucic. Okay. Can I tell you my nomination of hunk of the week? Yeah. Okay. Cause I think it might be the same. No, it's, Jake, it, I think it's different. Jake Middleton. Nope. Nope. So Jake Middleton is my new favorite player. First of all, he is a total hockey guy. He has no front teeth. Um, He doesn't wear his teeth in interviews. He is the one who originally started with the Minnesota Wild doing um, post-game interviews with tarps off, like shirtless. And he was interviewed about it by Biz on TNT during the intermission. And he's like, I just, I run hot. Like, I'm, I just showered. It's been 15 minutes. I'm in a sweater and I'm still sweating. And I just really resonated with him because I run hot. Like I'm always hot and melting as you've probably heard on some of the episodes where I record in the summer. And I'm like, I might like, I stand up and I'm just like sweating and it's hot and I'm miserable and I hate it. So like, he's my, my hockey spirit, hot animal. Um, Plus he's super good looking. He's got a great sense of humor and I'm here for it. That's my nomination. Who's your nomination? nomination? Uh, I'm going to go with uh, Brent Burns only because he won a face off against Sid. (laughs) That's just what I'm going to go with. Totally valid. Um, Here's two other play, two other people I think that should be considered this week. Okay. Patrick Line. Uh, He scored Uh his 10th hat trick. Okay. Uh, Kind of a big deal. And then Rod the Bod. I think Ooh. Carolina Hurricanes head coach Rod Brindamore should be nominated because two things happened. He will be the coach of the Metro Division at the All Star uh, game. And then he also just had his 200th win as a head coach. That's pretty good. Now, who do we pick as the winner? Do we let the I audience mean, decide? Out of those four? Yeah. Or out of like everybody. I still think McDavid no. Sock wins. Because that's just funny. Sock wins. <laughs> uh, I think it's funny, but I don't think it qualifies as like it just doesn't fit under the hunk name. There's like no, it gets honorable no qualifying things. <laughs> I know, but like if if we're gonna get to like specific and logical about it, like hunk is like a positive quality and i would dare say that wearing gross old socks is not a positive quality so we get to Fair. have an honorable mention asterisk <laughs> next to mcdavid and then <laughs> i mean i don't want to like like bulldoze everybody and go with my guy but like so how like who is supposed to decide this maybe we don't no, there's we go, no deciding factor it's just we're we're highlighting these individuals these are the the four yeah. honorable mm-hmm. mentions of hunk of the week yeah. so we'll, connor we'll mcdavid post a picture of all of them yes in a, a little in this quad video. box yeah so to recap uh mcdavid Middleton. gets an asterisk yeah <laughs> your pick is brent burns mine is jake middleton and Patrick Line? No, Rod the Bod. Rod the Bod. Okay. Yeah. We'll just do all of them. All of them's fine. <laughs> just put like 20 pictures up. Yeah. All right. If you all have any Someone feedback on how we should decide this, <laughs> then let us know because a new segment guys we're still working it out here okay uh we got to talk about two other really wacky headlines that happened this week (laughs) you know where i'm going right oh yeah because i sent you one of them and i was like i don't even this guy can't be real tell us tell us well blake wheeler literally busted his balls one of them at least um ruptured text testicle Testicle. yeah (laughs) get it together so it happened uh against the tampa bay lightning and it was oh it was last month 
And, yeah, but and it so didn't yeah, come December out. 15th for, I mean, yeah. you probably didn't really want a lot of people to know that. Um, lower body injury. <laughs> lower body injury. Uh, definitely lower body injury. It's not funny. Uh, it's not funny. He, he was probably in a lot of pain and I feel bad for him. But when I saw that, I was like, why didn't that come out sooner? I know. I... I I don't know if I should be sharing this here, but like I knew somebody who that happened to, but like they weren't a hockey player. Like sometimes things happen in that area and things can rupture and need to be removed. Um, so I'll just leave it at that. And, and, you know, that's like a sensitive subject for a lot of guys. They mm -hmm. have feel very strongly about their testicles. Um, and I'm going to stop. I'm going to stop right there, but he's well, stop. he's recovered. He's doing, he's doing fine. And it's not funny, but it's but funny. He played through it, which is insane. Yeah. So maybe um, he should be, he's the hunk of the week for the entire month of December through, through January, December 15th through January 15th. That's all Blake Wheeler. We're going to backdate it and pick a <laughs> one for last week, the last month. Yeah. But okay. If you're going with that, then how do you not pick John Carlson of the Washington Capitals who had to have his flipping ear reattached? It's wild. He got hit with a puck from a slap shot or he got hit in the side of the head by a slap shot. And there was like, mm -hmm. it was really bloody and gross and whatever. And like, they obviously again, didn't reveal what happened or like right. what it was um and it wasn't until his wife posted like happy birthday or something on social and wrote this long post that was like and you're incredible your ear was reattached and you carried out christmas and everybody was like what your ear like again super serious like funny but not and like also just like what is this headline how is this happening <laughs> what's going on <laughs> wild that's all yeah, i have to say i know um did you also see that there was a professional female to complete the michigan I at did. the iihf under 18 women's world championship yeah flawlessly without skipping a beat butter butter yeah. mila forgive me girl lopusanova she's only 14 14 she's um from slovakia she's a forward 14 nailing the michigan it is here to stay folks if you don't like that kind of goal it's it's here to say 14 year olds are delivering on it in high stakes games it's here it's happening women can do the michigan too insane yeah that's just going to be the uh, the title of this episode. Wild, insane, <laughs> who's hockey? We're going to toss it on over to the interview with Jeff uh, McLean, who is the co-founder of Pride Tape and the author, or he wrote the story um, about the of the book, Who's Hockey? So enjoy our conversation, um, but make sure to stick around until after the interview because Breezy is going to recap her experience at Lainey Wilson and I might be going and I'm really excited. And then also um, we have to talk about Alexander Skarsgård. So stay tuned for some of that non-hockey related content after the interview with Jeff. This week's episode of the House of Hockey podcast is brought to you by the NFL playoff action continues. We're one step closer to Super Bowl 57. And for the NFL divisional round, check out DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NFL. New customers can bet just $5 and get 200 in free bets instantly. Plus, all new and existing customers can take a shot at an even bigger payout with DraftKings stepped up same game parlays. Boost your NFL winnings with each leg you add up to 100%. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app and use code THPN. That's THPN for the Hockey Podcast Network. 
New customers can bet $5 on the NFL divisional round and get 200 in free bets instantly. Only a DraftKings Sportsbook with code THPN. Minimum age and eligibility restrictions apply. See show notes for details. Have you shopped at Pure Hockey? They are America's largest hockey retailer with dozens of stores and the option to shop online. If you or any of your kids play hockey, Pure Hockey is the place to find just about all of your equipment, skates, sticks, gear, bags, jerseys, and accessories. Plus, Pure Hockey is one of our affiliate partners. Next time you break your hockey stick or your kid grows out of his skates, why not check out purehockey.com? While you are looking for hockey equipment, you can also browse around for merchandise from your favorite NHL team, you know who Breezy's and mine are, and make gift giving even easier for your hockey loving friends and family. And do us a favor, use our special link for purehockey.com when you browse the site and make a purchase because we'll receive a small commission which helps me and Breezy create this podcast. Head to the episode's show notes for the special direct link to shop at purehockey.com. Welcome back to the House of Hockey podcast. We have with us Jeff McLean. He is one of the co founders of Pride Tape. And gee, we talked to you what in 2020? Yeah, it's been a couple of years. Nice to see you both again. This is great. Thank you. Yeah. And if. If people aren't aware of what Pride Tape is, Pride Tape is something that you guys started um, where it's hockey tape, but in rainbow color to be inclusive of the LGBTQ plus community. And you've been instrumental in helping many of the NHL teams host a Pride Night. Na- Pride- wow, I put Pride Night tape all together. A Pride Nape? A Pride <laughs> Tape night i'm very excited about it can you tell um where the players uh, a lot of the players have have worn the tape on their sticks during uh pre-game skate or warm-ups and uh curtis gabriel also friend of the podcast uh has been instrumental in in doing that and you guys have so much more going on though so that's just like a short little synopsis that i probably didn't get it quite exactly right but either way <laughs> jeff welcome you. Tell us what is the latest? Well, the latest is with respect to Pride Tape that you mentioned. I mean, we're in, I think, over 39 countries now. Uh, with, and and this is right now it's it's seven years uh, to about a week uh, hitting our original Kickstarter campaign that we did to raise the first to make the money to 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 make the first 10,000 rolls of tape. Uh, which we were successful in doing thanks to the Edmonton Oilers who who used a mock-up of it with six different rolls of tape. We had to go down to the arena and and wrap the sticks. And, uh, you know, they they put the idea forward uh, during their NHL uh, All-Star Skills competition and it made the front cover of the newspaper the next day. And then the following day, it made the uh, Guardian newspaper in the UK as well as newspapers all around the United States, which really helped lift uh, the exposure of the idea that we need a badge of support uh, from the hockey world to the LGBTQ plus community, because we were working on another project at the time, which was called nohomophobes.com, which scraped homophobic tweets in real time off Twitter to just see how prevalent this hateful language was and needing to put a stop to it. Um, so what we discovered is that that homophobic language uh, peaked during sporting events, people chirping at one another during NBA, NHL playoffs, again, Major League Baseball. And the, the granddaddy of them all coming up was the Super Bowl was where the numbers spiked the most. So we said we should do something uh, to address this around sports. And, you know, buying into the stereotypes and the fact that I'm Canadian, we chose hockey as we're here. <laughs> We're here in Edmonton and we love it and and we have you know close friendships with uh, the Edmonton Oilers and and former players Andrew Ference who was captain of the Oilers at the time came in and listened to the idea and uh, my best friend growing up Bill Ranford who's with the LA Kings and you know he's he's got a 30 plus year career with the NHL and he was really helpful into talking about locker room culture and and what we could do and 
And so this badge of support that we created, we felt if you could do repeat patterns on hockey tape, you know, Batman logos, Hockey Canada logos, et cetera, could we do colors? So we spent a couple of months with a lot of white hockey tape and magic markers, and <laughs> uh, but figured out how to work, how you know how to get it to work, and then you know talk to the NHL about it, and then it just it just kind of blew up from there, thanks to their global influence and all their friendships, and and now that uh, tape and and friendships we've garnered over the seven years has led us into uh, creating a new children's book called Who's Hockey. So new things. Oh yeah. Happen. Yeah, and oh, there Breezy it is. and I both have our copies with us. Awesome, we've I'll, read I'll, it. Like it. I hope you like it. Bre Breezy, I describe do. how you said it to me before we started. Yeah, it's like a mixture of like the Mighty Ducks meets like the Sandlot. I feel like. Wow, awesome! I like it. I like the story. Thank you so much. It's it's, it's basically, great. It's basically my life. Uh, and then, of course, I, I got my two incredibly talented friends involved, Terry, who's she's in Newfoundland and my friend Nicola, who lives here in Edmonton, and she's the illustrator on the book. And and we just had a lot of fun. But but certainly growing up, uh, I was an Air Force brat, so moved around a lot. And it wasn't always easy, uh, especially when when I moved to Germany. Um, because then you add on top of that the language barriers and the cultural barriers. But but what happened is, is I thankfully made the base team, uh, which was easier because there was less of us kids. Uh, I wasn't so successful later on in my hockey career. But uh, and we also had Bill Ranford as our goalie, which helped us when we traveled around. But we played in France and Holland and Sweden and everywhere else. And we were billeted out with with families. And and, you know, culturally, it was, you know, it was a wonderful opportunity, but it was sometimes hard to make friends because when you're in the military, you move in the summer when there's no school, so you don't miss any school. But what happens is, is all the kids are off on vacation, and therefore it was it was tough to meet anybody. But thankfully for me, hockey tryouts were always like late August, September before school started. So I got to meet new friends through hockey, so I didn't have to go into the new schools alone, uh, which was sometimes uh, daunting growing up. And, and I felt it, you know, somewhat, although it, 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 it's many uh, difficult challenges for, for the kids and the parents we spoke to from the LGBTQ community and, and others where the tape resonated, like women's hockey, we say, you know, girls and women's hockey championed the tape, uh, the BIPOC uh, teams um, all over North America and beyond champion the team, any, any, any group of individuals that felt that maybe hockey wasn't for them mm -hmm. um, adopted the tape. And, and so I've learned a lot from talking with parents and kids over, over the last years and saying, you know, it's somewhat similar in that, you know, but a lot more difficult that you've lived in a place your whole life and you still don't feel welcome. And that wasn't right. And, and then when the NHL shared their declaration of principles, with us and said, what do you think of this? And I said, well, it'd make a great kids book or, mm -hmm. or multiple, and then looked at what those words are. And then in alphabetical order, we said, okay, well, the first is acceptance, which to us um, made perfect sense, you know, working with pride tape because acceptance is integral to the game, to growing the game, like without it, you know, uh, we're, it's just not going to move forward. Too many kids were dropping out because they felt uncomfortable and we need to get yeah. kids to be, you know, and their parents, uh, you know, if we can bring kindness into this and acceptance and welcoming, um, you know, the better off the game's going to be. And there's so many hardworking programs and people out there that are, that are doing the work in the arenas and in the schools, uh, addressing this as well. So we're just happy that we can contribute you know, with the book and, and then that the NHL trusted us enough with the relationship that we built with Pride Tape to yeah. do this. It was it was a really great experience uh, uh, working on this. Yeah, and it's a great book. I, I enjoyed it. I actually read it four times this morning because I was like, I just want to keep reading. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't it read is. it that many times. Your wow. Head, I guess I'm, I mean, I'm a number one fan. You wrote it, Jeff. So, I mean, you know, yeah, you've well, probably yeah. read it quite a few times over in your editing process. But yeah, the, the three of us wrote it. And, you know, my friend Terry, who I work with on a daily basis at, at an ad agency, she's a writer and she just made it, 
you know, what it is and, and made it so great. What was interesting with Terry is that she grew up in Newfoundland with five brothers mm-hmm. and, and wasn't allowed to play hockey. She wanted to play hockey so bad, but her option was ringette back then. And now what's look- a ringette? So ringette is a stick with no blade and a rubber ring that you, that you basically put your stick in and carry it around the ice and shoot it same way. Uh, so kind of like a lacrosse. Kind of, but not. Yeah, it's kind of like lacrosse and hockey meet. But you know, uh, you know, I'm I'm a lot older than Terry. But even Terry, growing up, I mean, not having that option to play hockey was was uh, really something that we wanted to address as well. And again, because of how how thankful we are to to women's hockey, to girls hockey, and what they've done uh, for Pride Tape and making sport more welcome. We always say that if it wasn't for you know, the, the women's pro hockey leagues and all the way down through minor hockey, Pride Tape would not exist. That's the absolute truth. So it was important that our hero, Cam, uh, mm-hmm. was, was a girl that that is the greatest hockey fan on the planet, loves playing yeah. it more than anyone, but actually moves to this mystical place that has never heard of the game before. And mm-hmm. the other, you know, thread through this was that uh, – Adversity can be overcome with positivity. You know, Cam, you know, could have taken her net home and fortunately she met Lydia, but you know, you could just roll up and crawl into a ball when you're hit with adversity, but she decides to take it head on and and make new friends by introducing them uh, mm-hmm. to her favorite sport, which they hadn't heard of before. So that, you know, another theme is that we've we've really faced through pride tape more than anything is is that um you know there's there's a lot of hate and a lot of adversity out there and it gets to us a lot but we just have to hit it with positivity back and you'll find a lot of supporters a lot of a lot of friends throughout the way so we always say search for teammates and you'll find friends and that's what we experience through uh, creating the tape yeah that's the book is is so well done and the illustrations are absolutely beautiful i don't know if anyone's watching the video but they want to see those illustrations did you actually have a dog named gordy Uh, and i was kind of hoping she'd be around here but the real gordy's name is luna uh that's my dog (laughs) and uh my my uh, good friend nicola who illustrates the book she's one of the most talented illustrators around she can accomplish anything in any style she's she's incredible and people are really loving the illustrations and what was nice about that is that she surprised me with gordy the dog being oh i hadn't thought of that but when she showed the first drawings uh it was like that's luna she goes yeah i know i i drew her from here instagram feed you oh, know? So that was that's so cool. that was uh that was really amazing and the name while we were working on the book there was the 100th <laughs> anniversary celebration of the nhl and there was an interview with bobby Orr, wayne gretzky and mario lemieux and they were all asked who their favorite or who they thought the best hockey player of all time was and they all said gordy howe because you know he wasn't he wasn't there and they're all so generous right and kind right. Uh, guys so you know uh it, the the dog if it was if cam was the biggest hockey fan or is the biggest <laughs> hockey fan in the world the dog's got to be named gordy oh yeah definitely yeah. oh yeah oh yeah love it um where can people get the book where can they buy it they can get it almost anywhere which is exciting because we didn't think that this would this would happen but when you work with the nhl and have the nhl <laughs> logo on your book it, it helps and we're grateful but you can get it at uh online at, at walmart target and amazon in the united states as well as a lot of independent bookstores across the u.s uh in canada it's available at chapters indigo as well as a, a lot of independents and in amazon uh canada um, and then also it's available in, in other parts of the world as well. well. I think one of our first purchases was was in Australia, who's always been really, really supportive oh. of Pride Tape. So it's a it's a global story. And, and we've asked we were asked yesterday if we could convert it into another language over in Europe. And so we're looking into that. We we need to certainly convert it uh, into French for our friends mm-hmm. in at the Montreal Canadiens and, and Quebec and beyond. So yeah, we're looking at other languages and, and uh, hope to get the message out there that, that resonates with the kids. I mean, I think some of the best uh, critiques uh, besides yours, uh, Breezy, uh, <laughs> your uh, take on it, which I love, um, 
but you know we've had we've had parents tell us that when they read the book with their kids you know the diversity that we wanted to include in the characters in the book we've had some some children of of mixed uh, race families who parents who have told us that they just are having a struggle finding their place in their class and in their school because they they didn't see themselves physically like fitting in and you know uh, in, in a few instances the parents told us hey mom i see me in the book and mm -hmm. it's like that's that's beautiful that's exactly what we want to have happen is we want to have people see you know the, again what we learned with pride tape is is the importance of visibility you know is an amplification is is so important um and the courage that people have to 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 say that hockey is for everyone i think some people take it lightly but it's not it's not easy and, and some people there has been backlash and um but thankfully we we have people that have come back to us and and said you know even when something negative happened to them or their family member because of the tape the first thing when we call them uh, to talk about it or find out about it the thing that they always say first is please please don't stop what you're doing uh right. please don't you know because we we have our moments where the negativity on social is uh takes its toll but 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 thankfully you know to you both and and all the other people that care and and support us is, is really grateful because it is helping people we do see we do see that um we do we do see that out there so thank you and it Good. you know it's important definitely yeah and congratulations on uh, on everything going on i was really excited when we got it and I, I text ray right away and i was like oh my god did you see this <laughs> yeah we were stoked um and we also wanted to know what else are you guys doing to help promote um just inclusivity and acceptance in the sport of hockey i know you're involved you know with the league and i mean i guess it's more i have it's two questions what are you guys doing? And then what can people listening who want to be supportive do um, outside of, you know, rocking pride tape on their sticks, which we even see kids um, that we know through Instagram, they are wearing pride tape. And I think that's super important, but maybe just give something that uh, our listeners can do to show their support. That's that's helpful. Like, is it as simple as wearing a rainbow shirt or attending pride night? Uh, or, you know, what, what can people do? I think it's aligning yourself with local organizations that, like I mentioned earlier, are doing all the heavy lifting. I mean, we, we, we're very grateful of the praise, but there's a lot of organizations and people out there doing what I call the hard work, uh, whether it's on ice or in a community center or in the school. Mm -hmm. Um, but I, I think continuing, you know, to support and use Pride Tape and, and organizations that feel the same way about inclusion uh, in their communities, I think that's really important. We were really excited that when, you know, if they did autograph stick nights with Pride Tape that they were giving uh, to local organizations in their cities, like the Detroit Red Wings, for instance, um, you know, wow. provided pr provided the, uh, the proceeds of, of the auction to to local group that said that you know quite honestly it's it's really really difficult and and then you know there's other groups that we're connected to like the inclusive hockey teams you know certainly in 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 my neighborhood there's you know the edmonton rage and the calgary pioneers but there's also vancouver and halifax and new york and chicago and madison and all that that are working really hard to to, to bring uh everyone into the game and we had a a great conversation uh with Boston Pride Hockey before Christmas, who are having their upcoming at the end of this month, having their uh, pond hockey tournament uh, in Vermont, which is which sounds really cool. Really wanted to to go there, um, but you know, chatted about what to, to to what you were saying. You know, what 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 do you need? How can we help? When you start talking it through, you find out that it's actually not much. <laughs> you know, like okay. it's. It, it's not a lot of money they're looking for, but they still need it and they still need help. So we're trying to, you know, work with others, the NHL and, and their sponsors to try and get uh, some of these events off the ground. Uh, Joey and Steven in Seattle have an amazing uh, pride tournament. Uh, their first was last year in the summer and they're having their second uh, this year. And then we chatted, I chatted on Friday with the Calgary Pioneers 
about the Western Cup and, and uh, the LGBTQ plus tournament that they have, which was, I think, the first. And again, just trying to figure out, it's really about, I guess, connecting dots, connecting mm-hmm. And again, it's, it's just so funny that it comes back to the book about, you know, search for teammates and find friends. <laughs> Finding the people that can help uh, contribute to these really important events that are already happening because people are already putting in the hard work. So it's just, you know, they need they need a little bit of support and uh, we want to try and help them in, in, in any way that we can to do that. Uh, whether so does that mean like some of the fans can maybe petition their team or email their, you know, ticket representative if they don't already have a pride night? Do all the teams in the NHL have a pride night? I don't think so, right? Uh, if not, it's pretty close, uh, yeah. whether it's a pride game or a hockey is for everyone game. Uh, right. But I, okay. I, I, think we're, I think I think from our understanding, it's pretty much everyone everyone does. And uh, but again, I well, think that's it's good then it's connecting and they do a great yeah it's very good and they and again it's doing a doing what they're already doing which is again connecting to those those local organizations yeah uh those local pride organizations that that need help uh raising money um putting on their own events but mm-hmm. but again i will say that, that that our experiences is that they're doing all the hard work and and they're doing it already you know um but if if you don't know about them you know look for the local inclusive hockey team in your market there's there's so many more uh st louis uh reached out to us before christmas they just started up um and again i mentioned halifax which is my most if you look at it on instagram it's my most fun uh i uh, hockey logo of all time. I love the little the little muscle with this stick with pride tape on it. I love what they did. But uh, there's uh, yeah. So you know, as far as other things, you know, the book uh, mentioned it's it's the first in the series of the NHL's Declaration of Principles. Uh, you know, it's it's uh, acceptance, courage, humility, integrity, passion, perseverance, respect, and teamwork. I know them all off by heart now. So, so you know, if if it, if it goes well and and we can get enough books out there to kids and their parents, then we'll do the next one, courage, uh, right. which we're we're looking forward to. And and so, again, uh, I think the traction you can have with stories is is really important. Um, because look, look exactly what you're doing, right? You're in the business of storytelling. And I think that's where the, where the power is. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, when I talked to John Cooper, uh, one of the first out professional hockey players, he's the goalie in Denmark, really nice, really nice person. Uh, we chatted a few years ago. And he, one of the things that he said to me that stuck with me was, I tell my story so that it gives uh, people the courage to tell theirs. And mm-hmm. I think, you know, there's, that's kind of what we, are hoping to achieve here is if we can put some stories out there that resonate with people that make them connect, you know, that talk about larger umbrella overarching issues like, um, like acceptance and courage, et cetera, then hopefully other people will want to go. It was fun. We, I, I talked to some elementary schools before, before Christmas and, and the kids were so engaged, like they, they all want to go and, and uh make their own book now and it's like good i hope that there's you know i hope hundreds of thousands of books that make a difference out there so you know with the nhl having us come to new york and read to the kids from the rangers devils and islanders program it was absolutely amazing and i got you know we we left it for questions and answers and the kids absolutely stumped me on 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 so many of them like well (laughs) it's like i'm not ready for this but they're so thoughtful and so smart (laughs) and uh and so conscientious i I think that you know we're we're in good hands Uh, we always say our future is brighter and oftentimes we don't have you know with pride tape it's the issues aren't with the kids it's with the parents um but that's that's another story for another time but we say uh, again. One of the things I've learned the most, and talking to my friends who are coaches in the NHL, uh, Jamie Compon with the with the Panthers, and he was win a did win a cup with your Chicago Blackhawks, Rachel. So I have to give that plug. And uh, Bill <laughs> Ranford of the LA Kings. We talk about yeah. talent and character, and we say now like talent is is table stakes. Like you got to be at a certain caliber to to pl- you know to to raise mm-hmm. up to a high level in the game. But it's character that is even far more important now. And, and, and one of the lines that I 
thought of in just coming up with the book and, and afterwards talking to people is that, that uh, talent gets you in the room, character keeps you there. And mm -hmm. I think we see that a lot with the junior, you know, players that are going to be go up into the and drafted into the NHL and those interviews and how important they are. And and it's it's not about it's not all about talent like it was when I was growing up. Now it's about character and what do these players stand for? And certainly with what you're both doing and 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 what social media does for the players to learn more about what they support, what they believe mm -hmm. in. That stuff matters. Character is huge, uh, more than ever. So, again, what can we do to help yeah. uh, tell those stories? Yeah, I think you hit it on the head with the uh, the importance of character, especially now. And we support you and everything you're doing. And we will make sure to include a link uh, to get the book for both Canada and the U.S. Um, to purchase who is hockey who's hockey it did feel like the the title because again we 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 met with some folks earlier on that were like not sure about the title not sure about the character blah 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 and we, well we we're gonna stick to our heart on this one but we we felt that that hockey is a who even more than a what you know mm -hmm. it is it, it is that character it is those declaration of principles mm -hmm. from the nhl that make you that try and you know make sure that, that that people understand that who you are as a person will get you a lot further than even even your talents will and I, I think the road is what i've heard from my friends in the game very close to it is that the road is littered with with uh, uh unfortunately with individuals that had all the talent in the world that were but but maybe just didn't have the characteristics that would you know what they say make them good for the room or whatever so be right. kind and and be thoughtful and conscientious and and i th i think we'll, we'll go far and we'll, we'll be in better places i know a lot of negative things have, are out there and have happened in in the hockey world and beyond mm -hmm. but again our, our goal is to to come at this with positivity and align with with uh, people like yourselves that that really care about the game and and growing the game you know to a better place <laughs> All right. Well, thank you, Jeff, for the story and obviously the the actual physical story. Um, love the books. Go get it where you can. We'll post it in our blog and we'll shoot a link probably on the story too as well. Yeah. Because um, we can do that. So yeah, now we're going to get to I'm dying. my favorite. I'm like more, I'm almost more excited to hear about Lainey Wilson than I was about Hillary Knight. <sighs> How was the concert? I died. <gasps> but you are revived, thank God. I love Lainey Wilson. I love Lainey Wilson. I love Lainey Wilson. That's all I'm going to say. Um, I had yeah. the VIP experience. My cousin Caitlin went with me. My mom was going to go, but then my mom, she was like, what's her name? Delaney? And I was like, you're not going. No, you're not going. You're not going. Uh, my cousin Caitlin you're, did not know who she fired. was either. Yeah, you're she fired. didn't know who she was either, but uh, she wanted to hang out with me. And so we did. And so I had the VIP experience. Mm -hmm. I got a autographed poster. <gasps> Actually, no. two of them. Yeah, no. Autographed poster. I'm going to hang up. I have, so I have two of them because I had two tickets, right? So I'm going to hang them side by side in like a frame and I'm going to, that's going to be a part of the new uh, studio new pod. Um, so, so stay tuned for that. I don't know where my other things went. Oh, hold on. I well, she's have... wearing a Lainey Wilson shirt as well. If you're not watching the video version. Um, I so I've got a little. Songs called Pipe. Which... Pipe? Pipe. Yeah, it's from her first album. But my okay. favorite song off of her new album is called Wild Flowers and Wild Horses. Um, so, and one of my favorite lines is that is I I push like a daisy through all sidewalk cracks and that she's made of a fifth of jack because I'm definitely made of a fifth of jack. Let's just be real. Yep. So I'm going to get that probably tattooed on me, but I Love it. just ordered some daisies and I'm going to put it in my little fifth of jack and it'll be a part of my <gasps> set back there with my little Grinch tree. <laughs> leaves so brilliant sneak peek. sneak peek there um so yeah this is one of my favorite uh songs from her old album and then i have been seeing her crew wear this one shirt and i've been trying to find it and i couldn't find it anywhere but they had it at the show and i had to buy it what? i bought three shirts <laughs> 
<laughs> it says Laney expletive Wilson. Um, yeah, it's amazing. I definitely don't curse. Um, but this is just really funny for me to wear. Oh yeah. Um, so yeah. Well, come on, Ringo, come join the party. Anywho, Everything's so, fine. Um, What's the third shirt? The third shirt was just a tour shirt. Still amazing. Is it the bell bottom it's, one? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So uh VIP experience. I was like, I think we were like the 10th person in line. So I was right up at the barricade and like some guy walks over and he goes, all right, uh, you guys are going to do a Q and a session with her. So a few housekeeping rules, just like raise your hand. She'll call on you. Um, don't like all speak at once. And we're like, okay. And he goes, ladies and gentlemen, Lenny Wilson and she walked out right in front of me and my jaw dropped I was like and I like kind of like took I couldn't take my eyes off of her and I kind of like sat back and I like quickly looked at my cousin Caitlin and she had the exact same face with like Caitlin doesn't (laughs) listen to country music right and I stared at her the entire time she played two acoustic songs she did a Q&A session uh or like she called on people and she kept going what you got what you got um She's did you ask a question? I did not because I couldn't think of like a good question to ask her because like everyone else was doing like super like deep questions. And my cousin Caitlin was gonna ask her if she's ever wrestled a gator. But then like she like got scared because everyone was asking really deep questions and like it was like war questions, like my brother's out at, in Nepal for war. Oh, Can geez. you like say happy birthday to him? Or like you help me through like x y and z and oh, it was man. a little bit like also like yellowstone questions because she's obviously in yellowstone but um i just right, can't think of anything vibe. it wasn't the yeah. vibe and then like a lot of shows before they said like a group photo and like a lot of people were taking like individual photos so i was like oh my god if i'm gonna meet her like i gotta like i was so nervous the entire day i had to like take a shot to like calm my nerves and I'm sitting at my cousin's house like because I had to drive from one cousin's to the other because it was two hours I was staying that was in Chico I was staying in like Davis so we drove from Davis to Chico I was freaking out the entire car ride then I had to eat because like we didn't eat at all and then I then we had to drive like it was like a 10 minute drive from my cousin's to the senator theater and let me tell you though People up in in Chico, they're very nice, but like people were trying to get into a fight. There's three fights that were breaking out around me, and one group of girls they turned out to be like a mean girl group, and they were like screaming mm. at this other girl to take her hat off. Mm-mm. You go into a Laney concert, people wear hats at Laney yeah. concerts. Laney wears hats, so um wasn't a cool vibe and i also got very annoyed by a group of like men who were like in their 40s because they were like screaming at each other that they were too old to be there and then like broing out and i'm like i can't even then, hear her yeah shut up <laughs> um but laney was amazing um she looked good she sounded good i have so many videos um i was gonna hold off on posting them because i didn't want to like ruin it for you yeah uh, i just you didn't, definitely i didn't turn the sound on oh like I saw you posted some stuff and I was like oh, and I was like oh my god she's so freaking close Lainey's so beautiful her voice I could listen to her talk now like you said like how many uh-huh. episodes ago like I could <clears throat> listen to her talk with that accent I can't even do that accent I'm already planning my outfit I bought my tickets I got a friend to go I was gonna mm-hmm. go without her without anybody mm-hmm. I didn't care yeah. I am I am pretty sure I know what I'm gonna wear um I'm not sure. Do I need to buy a Laney Wilson shirt before I go to the concert or do I no. buy one at the concert? At the concert. Okay. Buy one at the concert. Yeah. Cause they just, she doesn't really have like anything like good online, but like she's got okay. good like merch at, I mean, you, we shows. could be twinsies. Yeah. You should get this one as like lyrics on the back. Okay. All right. I don't know what I'm going to get, but I, I also know got a, get a koozie. Shirt. I think it's downstairs. Oh, like it, it's her middle finger because it's like she has a song called Middle Finger. And it's that's just so really cool. funny. That song is so funny. It is so funny. I love it. I like might a, have to get that too. It's like a rainbow, like koozie was five bucks. And I was like, while I'm here, I've already spent like, because her shirts are kind of expensive just because it's like, it's like female vocalist of the year in my life. I love Lainey mm-hmm. Wilson. Um, <laughs> What's the so, yeah. song? Boots. I don't know if it's called Boots. But it's about her dad's boots. It's about her dad, yeah. 
that yeah, she's oh. saying an acoustic version of that in the vip and then she's saying the acoustic version of never say never because she wasn't going to have it in the lineup okay oh my god i wish i i don't know how i could get a vip experience i'm gonna have to look at the um uh um because the tickets were sold out so i bought off yeah. of StubHub, and then I'm going to have to see what the local radio stations are doing if they're giving away chances to win tickets or like mm -hmm. win access to yeah. the VIP. So I'm going to have to see what I can do, but I am okay. like so excited. Yeah. I am going to make my friend go early. She's not going to like that probably, but we're going to be there pretty early because, or I'm going to make her come up to the front with me. I want to be as close to her as possible. And I'm pretty sure the venue I'm going to is small AF. So yeah. This one was I'm pretty excited. small, but it was an old movie theater, like a like an old, old movie theater that they like had ripped out seats on, but it was big. Right. There was like a balcony, which like I don't understand how people were sitting on the back because you were sitting in seats in the balcony. Who wants to sit yeah. down? But then be like on the floor because it was all general admission, like there wasn't assigned yeah. seating. But on the floor, towards the very back, there was more seats. Oh. But like the paint was kind of coming off the walls and like it kind of smelled out. And the guy in front of me, he goes, man, when I heard she was playing at the Senator, I felt bad for her because I was like, man, the carpet smells. <laughs> <laughs> it was a little stinky in there, not going to lie. Yeah. But um, but like, just think how lucky we are. I haven't seen her yet, but I'm like, think how lucky we are that we're going to get to see her in such a small venue oh, up yeah. close. Oh, yeah. Forget it, guys. She's going to be world touring, and she is. She's going with. Is she on tour with Luke with Combs this summer? Luke Combs, yeah. And I'm going to go. And he's I'm sold going out everywhere. In, yeah, I'm going to the Luke Combs show in Nashville, and um, you lucky dog. I'm I'm going for Lainey most of mostly, right. uh, but still. we're sitting kind of hot. I think the tickets I ended up getting were off of StubHub, and it was, I think it's in like a, a 300 level box. Whoa. at the nissan stadium because like that's like kind of like a cheaper ticket that i had seen that like because everything else was ridiculous and i was like kind of scared because i was like they weren't like in my stub hub account at citizen to get delivered two days before the show right and then i got an email from like the ticket person who like forwarded me the emails and it was someone at vanderbilt university so i was like oh, oh. okay so it might hustle. be a box <laughs> okay <laughs> yeah in a vandy box that's kind of sick um you're gonna have a good experience stay tuned for yeah, that, folks I'm, I'm going for lady and i'm hoping that she's gonna play the grand Ole opry the night before because then that'd be preds game opry luke combs yeah and that's just a great time i'm dead for you i know i can't wait to see i'm so excited i have had any time i'm in the car <clears throat> spotify laney wilson i'm like Lainey wilson. memorizing lyrics mm -hmm. i'm like Get, I'm like, what did she say there? I'm like, I'm about to start reading lyrics off the damn internet so I can yeah. memorize and sing well, along. Her, that's her set like. list is out there. So I can send you her set list so you can no, like, no. learn no, no. songs if you want. No, I just like to be surprised. Like, I like to be okay. like, what's she playing next? Well, she does play my you know. favorite song. So, okay, good. And it's amazing. Oh. Anyway, um, good. I'm glad you had a good time. I knew you would. Uh, we have to talk about one other small thing, and that is Alex Alexander Skarsgård. He's an actor, and he was seen at Medicine Square Garden kissing the one oh. and only Henrik Lundqvist, who was then smooched by Ryan Reynolds, and I could have died there I don't as know well. who was luckier, Ryan or Henrik. Those are the only two I really care about. Okay, Alexander Skarsgård is like the most beautiful human being. He was in the series True Blood on HBO. And he's been uh, in Big Little Lies. I don't know. There's something about him that I am like, holy hell. There's like this charisma thing there that just gets me. And I wish I could have been Henrik Lundqvist. Like, and smooched by both of those men on the cheek, like, how do I make oh, yeah. that happen for me? But this story that I have to tell is about Alexander. When oh. I lived in LA, as you do when you live in LA, you see celebrities in the wild. Just you just do. But it's like but it's not that common. So people who come to LA true. and they're like, I'm gonna see celebrities everywhere, it's not, it's not like that either. 
it's not it's not and it is at the same time like depending on where it, you are in the area exactly um yeah. but they don't normally like really like go out in public not like in new york where you like you walk everywhere and like you see people like i feel like yeah. in new york you see more celebrities than you do in la but either way i was um hiking uh griffith park total basic la and <laughs> i was on my way down uh the hill that's where you're gonna see celebrities Runyon yeah. Canyon that's Runyon where you're gonna see. <laughs> or um Griffith Park and yeah. so up coming up the hill is this tall beautiful statuesque man he's running running up a hill first of all I don't run up hills I walk up hills and I have to stop when I get to the top <laughs> and catch my breath I'm like who? Oh, cardio is a bitch, man. He's running up a hill. And I'm like, wow, look at that beautiful man coming towards me. And as he's coming towards me, I'm like, that's Alexander Skarsgård. And I turn and he runs past me. And I'm like, oh my God, should I go run up the hill past him and stop him and be like, you're beautiful. I'm obsessed with you. And I didn't, but I was like, holy shit, that was Alexander Skarsgård. He's like very tall and like statuesque and has this sort of energy about him. And I was like, oh, I should go back. I should go back. But then I was like, let's be real, Rachel. You can't like, you're never going to catch him. He's running up a hill. I'm like, That's you're funny. not. That's so. kind of how I felt about Lainey Wilson when I saw her. I was like, <gasps> this is Lainey I, oh my God. And when he was running away, it would probably felt the exact same way. I was like, I'm driving away from Lainey Wilson. I can't handle this. Exactly. I yeah. was like, I, I should go back. I should go. Back. I need to go. What yeah. am I going to do? I look like a wet dog after walking up a hill in LA, let alone. We have big well, hills. Not going to lie. They are incline, steep inclines. They it's are. Not, it's not it's no like. Joke. No, no, mm -hmm. it's not flat. So. Anyway, that's my Alexander Skarsgård story. So wow, I I do not have one. I'm sorry. That's okay. That's okay. Now I just got to have a Ryan Reynolds story. That I'll be oh, don't we all wish we had a Ryan Reynolds story? <laughs> Thanks for coming over to our House of Hockey podcast and hanging out with us. We'll be back next week with a brand new episode. And in the meantime, you can follow us on social media.